Let's go! So, who can forget this image right here? Of course, everybody will say LSU got so lucky that Marco Wilson tossed this shoe. And you're right, okay? LSU caught a ton of lucky breaks in this game. However, I think one of the bigger ones is one we don't talk a whole lot about. So, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Obviously, this is Championship Week. If you love deep LSU content, this is the place for you because yesterday we talked about the plays that don't show up in the box score, and legit, we found plays that never show up in the box score, and we shared them with you. And if you want to see that film study, part one is down below. But today, we're going to focus on this Florida victory because of course you got to win games like this to go to the college football playoff. The biggest break actually happened during the game and it wasn't even Marco Wilson's shoot throw or cleat throw. That's very clearly a cleat. Uh, it, it was something that I believe LSU needs to do a better job of next season. Benching struggling players. Now, I always say this on the channel, people that have been following my channel for quite some time, you know how I feel about criticizing LSU Tigers. I don't like to do it, okay? I really don't because these guys give it their all for the dear beloved LSU Tigers that we all love. That's why you're here. You love LSU football. LSU caught a lucky break in this game that Cordell Flott and Jason Hines took themselves out of the game. And those two guys being taken out of the lineup really helped out LSU to actually win this game. So, uh, as many of you know, last year LSU had a lot of players that struggled. The problem was it started to really begin to pile up. Let's first start with Cordell Flott, who we've actually done a film study on how difficult things were for Cordell Flott. It didn't help that the defensive coordinators gave him really tough assignments and the safety play and their safety positioning was really, really, really bad. Um, so, yes, you do defend Cordell Flott. Plus, he went up against a murderer's row of slot wide receivers. That included Kadarius Toney and a little bit of this game, Traylon Burks, Devonta Smith. So, Cordell Flott had some really, really tough assignments in his defense. However, he also got lit up by Mississippi State's Austin Williams, who the problem wasn't that he struggled. Player struggle. It was a weird year last year. It was the fact that LSU never took him out. Every single week, they not only kept playing him, they kept putting him in positions to go up against the Devonta Smiths and the Traylon Burks. And I understand, a lot of that is on Bo Pelini, but why wasn't there some staffer to step in and say, look, this is lunacy. This guy is very clearly struggling. Uh, our coverage schemes, once again, if you want to see specific coverage schemes on plays where Cordell Flott, it's really tough to blame, but it did look like he was burned. Once again, I highly recommend you watch the film study floating in the top right corner. But Cordell Flott was really, really, really put in those bad spots, but still, he was also getting burned really, really, really bad. So, Cordell Flott should have been benched, or they should have put him somewhere else on the field, okay, or giving him some other type of assignment, because the worst thing you can do to a player that is really struggling is to keep throwing him out there, because it's in his head, it's obviously something mental, or it could be something physical, you've got to bench players that are struggling, well, as many of you know, Cordell Flott against Florida was burned early in the game, and he was ejected for targeting, okay, he was taken out of the game, obviously, and inserted the game was uh, Dwight McLaughlin, who also had some rough spots, but guess what? He was a little bit better. Um, and then they moved Jay Ward to the slot, and Jay Ward was also playing at an extremely high level on the slot, as good as you possibly can play against Kadarius Tony. The LSU pass defense still got burned, but you can make the case that they wouldn't have been burned as badly if Cordell Flott would have stayed in the game. So... You know, <laughs> Flott is an easy target. He is a big-time bounce-back candidate next season, and I wish him nothing but the best. But last season, LSU should not have kept doing the same thing over and over because it not only hurt Cordell Flott, it hurt the rest of the team. But mark my words, I do believe in a potential bounce-back for Cordell Flott. 
Also, Chasen Hines. Now, um, I hate to say it, but it needs to be said, and we've said it a lot on this channel, the LSU offensive line was really bad last season. And a lot of this blame does go on James Craig because he was not a great offensive line coach. However, Chasen Hines in particular was really bad. Um, we talked about the Mississippi State game. He cost LSU 11 points, 11 points in that game. That's huge. LSU probably wins that game if Jason Hines just plays a little bit better. And it would be different if it was just one, you know, poor performance, which is fine. Some people have bad games. But this continued to happen. And I could go down a laundry list of really, really, really bad plays that Jason Hines made last year. On John Emery's long touchdown run against Alabama, Jason Hines got away with the blade and hold. Also, in this Florida game, Jason Hines held someone at the one-yard line, which would have resulted in a Chris Curry touchdown on a replay reversal, but because of the holding penalty, instead of a potential fourth and goal or touchdown from there at the one-yard line, it ended up being a third and 11 from the 11, and, of course, LSU had to settle for a field goal. Now, unfortunately, Chase and Hines did end up getting hurt in this third quarter. I hate it when players get hurt. It stinks. Uh, but Chase and Hines, when he was hurt, was, of course, had to be taken out of the game. LSU put in Cam Wire, who had never really played guard. He stepped in at that right guard position. And after my evaluation, there was only one play where he just flat out whiffed. So, Chase and Hines' replacement was an offensive tackle who never really played guard, and Cam Wire not only had a good game against Florida, he followed that up with a great game against Ole Miss. So, what does that tell you? That Chase and Hines could have been taken out weeks before um, this Florida fiasco happened, but LSU failed to do it. Now, I understand that their depth was very, very thin last year. And those guys are at practice, and I am not. So full disclosure, I don't know what actually happens uh, behind the scenes at practice. Obviously, the LSU coaching staff knows way more about football than I do. But to me, <laughs> I was just shocked that LSU kept throwing Chase and Hines out there, who, by the way, had some really good tape at left guard and center in the years prior to him actually becoming a full-time starter in 2020. Now, Jason Hines has been hurt a lot during this fall camp, and there could be the, the potential of him not starting. I know Anthony Bradford's really trying to get that right guard position. So, yes, he could start next season, and Jason Hines could have a major bounce back next season. I hope he's Alan freaking Fanica next season. I love the fact that Jason Hines, he's only done everything right. He's only gave it his all. He's only played hard. But it doesn't take away the fact that he... So, sometimes the best coaching decisions, okay, that you have to make as a championship coach is the tough one to bench someone that is not playing well. And I understand that is not an easy thing to do, okay? Especially when your roster is, is so low on numbers and, and they're struggling so much. And you can make the case that benching someone, you don't want to mess up the chemistry and all of that... But to the point where that things got last season with how bad both of those players are struggling, LSU should have made the decision to take both of them out of the game because that could be the best thing for them. Sometimes, you know, I've been benched before for poor play uh, in, in multiple sports, and watching the game from the sideline really helped me out in understanding and, and seeing the game from a different angle it also made me work harder at practice to earn my spot back to make sure I never relinquished it again. And, you know, it's just one of those things. It's a good mental and physical break. And you can make the case that LSU doesn't beat Florida unless those two things happen because both of those guys were having really poor games up to that point in the game. The week-by-week -week schematic adjustments are absolutely key, but even more key can be your personnel, okay? Now... You do give LSU coaching staff a lot of credit for making the decision to go with Max Johnson instead of TJ Finley in this game. That was obviously a really good personnel decision because 
LSU probably doesn't win that game with TJ Finley instead of Max Johnson. So that was obviously a really good personnel decision. They also made some other good ones last year, but the bottom line, those two guys should have been taken out of the game. And trust me, I like both of them. They say and do all the right things. They don't buy, you know, our public accounts. They don't do anything to disparage LSU. But the thing is, you're hurting everyone else in the locker room when you keep running out guys that aren't having good seasons, okay? You're, you're doing a disservice to the rest of the team, the rest of your staff, and the fan base when you don't make those decisions. And they're uncomfortable. Trust me, I, I don't like doing this video, but, you know, this needs to change going into next season because if we don't make those changes, the same things will keep happening over and over again. Boom! Let me know, do you think, that this is what I want my comment question to be, do you believe in a bounce back season for Cordell Flott and Jason Hines, okay? Comment down below, Championship Week Part 1 is right here, it is Power Hour LSU Boom! I think we're doing uh, some lasagna tonight, let's go!